Uh, yeah, hello. My name is Dixon Sider, and I'm here with Dan Balligan of Zipahemus. So, Dan, tell all of our audience about the new community managers, Amanda and Sarah. Why, why did you fucking hire these people? Oh, I hired Amanda and Sarah because I think that they appeal to the behemoth's age demographic a lot. And they have the exact same humor I do. Uh, they're adults. And, yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, okay, okay but like, have they been, have, what have they been doing? Oh, they've just been uh, managing the Discord server and the Twitter account. And, and, and keep in mind, I haven't seen what they've been doing, but uh, I'm pretty sure they're doing a good job. <laughs> Okay, so let's say if someone is breaking the rules, do you think that they handle it in a humane way? Well, I'm pretty sure they have logical ways of handling stuff. They're pretty nice people, to be honest. (laughs) Yep, they're perfect. The Behemoth is a company made by two naked lesbians in a college dorm room by the name of Tom Paladin and Dan Fulp. One cold dark night, probably on some. <laughs> Dan had said to Tom, Me head feels like an alien hominid. And that's when Tom said, Wow, that would be a really great name for a game. Then they made a shitty little flash game by the same name. It played like absolute garbage. And they were so disappointed by it that they decided to go to a bunch of studios so they can just put this game on console. And that's how Alien Hominid was born. I'll let you choose to believe that or not. Alien Hominid was developed with the sole purpose of trying to implement Contra and Metal Slug mechanics in the Flash. With the very mashy shoot controls and constant apparition of bosses, these factors are what made the game really fun and memorable. The only unfun part of this game that I can list are the spaceship levels. They suck. Hell, they suck so much that I didn't even bother to record footage for them. Not to mention Dan Paladin's expressive art style with its mix of simplicity made this game just so charming. It gave it so much personality and helped it to stand out from the other indie games like Gish which destroyed this thing in IGF. It really did just feel like an arcade game, but bigger and on your console. Right now, you can actually still buy this game on the Xbox One and on Steam because they recently ported it there. Definitely one of Behemoth's best. And after Alien Hominid, they would go and release Castle Crashers in 2008, a side-scrolling beat-em-up game, and Battle Block Theater in 2013, an isolated 2D platformer, which definitely shot up in personality in comparison to Castle Crashers and Alien Hominid. Its comedy was on full display, with Will Stamper doing all of the voice work for the game. The Behemoth really started to develop its arsenal of games, being small and fast-paced, but fun and worth the purchase. Especially when you play these games with friends, get a bunch of gents together and sit down for a session of Castle Crashers. It'll be a time you'll never forget. And with Battle Block Theater's cooperative and kind of versus gameplay, made it even more fun than Castle Crashers to play with friends. However, Behemoth did make another video game, being Game 4. And it was a completely different shift in terms of aspects that made the Behemoth the Behemoth. Pit People! Pit People is a much different game compared to the Behemoth's previous games. Pit People is a turn-based strategy game about the adventure of some fat loser named Horatio having his son kidnapped from him and has to go and save him with his ragtag group of friends. 
I guess. Although Pit People is a lot less fast-paced than the previous Behemoth games, it's still extremely simple to understand. You move your characters to deal damage to enemies. The enemies do the same thing back to you. Repeat. There are a few factors that kind of make this game different from other Behemoth games. One of which being the art style. Well, color style to be more specific. Usually the colors in Behemoth games are very saturated and very vibrant. Like an alien hominid, it's easy to separate characters from the midground and the background due to the colors of both sides. Same with in Castle Crashers, the backgrounds are drawn in very dark, desaturated colors. But the characters and visual effects are very saturated, making it easy to separate them from the background. The reason I keep saying saturated is because Pit People's coloring style is so desaturated. Most of the colors in this game looked like if you took vibrant colors and dipped them in mud and took them out and threw them on characters. But I don't actually have a problem with it, because the desaturated colors in this game really do fit the game's overall aesthetic and the world it takes place in. I should also bring up cutscenes while I'm at it. Alien Hominid's cutscenes just look like Dan Paladin's flashcards. Cartoons. Castle Crashers doesn't have any cutscenes, but automated sequences in game, just to push the story forward. Bellbuck Theater's cutscenes aren't really animated, but are told in the form of cardboard cutout puppet shows, narrated by the one and only Stamper, and they have tons of personality and tons of character. The cutscenes in Pit People are a lot more tweeny and use a lot more rigging compared to the cutscenes of the original games. It's to the point in which the animations kind of look like. But none of that is really a big deal. What is a big deal is Pit People's length. When I first completed the game, I got so upset. The story went by like it didn't exist at all. And this is where one of Behemoth's habits would begin to severely brew up. Repetitive gameplay and lack of variety. Yes, I know that Behemoth games aren't that long. But, previous Behemoth games never made the player feel like they just kept doing the same thing. Battle Block Theater did have a bit of this, but the gameplay loop was at least fun. And the game has some of the best replay value out of all the Behemoth games. You can literally make your own levels and put them on the internet. With Pit People's gameplay, it always felt like you are just doing the same thing, moving characters around, killing the same type of people, barely any kind of new thing to experience. Well, for me at least. And Pit People's variety is very low, there's only a handful of classes to pick in the game. And yeah, I know there's a ton of hats and helmets and stuff and weapons, but that doesn't matter. You're just doing the same attack, but stronger or weaker. And if you have this build right here, you don't even need to worry about getting other characters. Thank you to uh, Dot for recommending this build. And the only sense of replay value in this game is just walking around the map or fighting enemies, in which the map is randomly generated too, by the way, and or side missions. But side missions don't really change the repetitive gameplay. You're just doing the same thing, but with different dialogue this time from different characters. And it's so boring. For the type of game that Pit People is, the game itself was well thought out, but it wasn't executed properly. Overall, this game is just kind of whatever. This isn't the game that I'm supposed to talk about, but I'm bringing it up because this kind of game is really important to what the Behemoth would dabble into with their newest game. And I'll conclude this part by saying that I personally don't think Pit People is a bad game. I just don't personally like playing it, because I'm not a big turn-based combat guy. And don't let my opinion on this game change the way you see it. I could not care less if you think that this game is fun. It's my opinion, I'm entitled to it, and you don't have to care. On January 31st of 2020, the Behemoth announced their fifth game, Alien Hominid Invasion. The video opens on an animated cutscene of an agent playing with figurines of the characters. The figurines from the 2000s, funnily enough. The agent then gets jump scared by the screen behind him, he's about to press a big button, and then the logo is shown to us. Nobody, including myself, had any idea what this game was going to be, until an entire month later when we got footage of the game for the first time. It was still a run and gun game, but it looked a lot more fun than HD, to me at least. Following this gameplay, trailer, the Behemoth would do a bunch of dev streams, which showed the viewers how the game worked and all of the new stuff that they added. Around 2021, they released a public beta that people could sign up for and play through Steam. And let me tell you, when I tested out this beta, it was insanely fun. It's a completely different game to HD, despite being marketed as a sequel. Instead of the linear level design, you progress through city blocks, shooting up enemies and getting intel to post to a fax machine. Once you upload the intel, you do a little task and complete it and get money. You do this three or four times until you leave a level. You play this game by going through several city blocks up to an enemy HQ. On the way, you'll collect money and loot boxes in which you can go to shops on the map to go and drop off your loot boxes and to buy stuff. At enemy HQs, you'll then have to fight a boss, and once that boss is dead, you'll get a mutation. 
basically your special ability. This was unironically some of the most fun I've ever had with the Behemoth game, so much that I actually got 100 hours on the beta, because when playing this game, I kept the mental note to myself on how much stuff they were able to add, imagine the possibilities of new weapons and new enemies that we get to fight, and I actually enjoyed this game a whole lot more than Pit People, so my expectations were insanely high for this game, and oh boy, do I regret doing that. I will talk about that later. But now, I want to talk about the streams the Behemoth did when this game was being developed. Manuel and Roxanne were the two community managers around the time of Pit People and early Alien Hominid Invasion development. They were my personal favorite community managers. They were relaxed, they were funny, they were very enjoyable to listen to when streaming. It was just amazing. They even had a Flash podcast where they interviewed several Flash developers like Mike Welsh and Tyler Glale. It was the proper golden age for Behemoth until they left. I don't know the exact reason why they left, but it is upsetting. The community manager after their time was Shane. I don't know much about Shane, but I assume he left because of the Behemoth Discord server. The reason I don't know much about Shane was because I wasn't talking in the Behemoth's Discord server around the time he was there for the community management, and according to what people said about him, he was pretty good. So yeah, Behemoth lost their three best community managers, and after that, they decided to hire the two individuals Amanda and Sarah. Oh yeah, um, I'm gonna talk about the community. God's only one. In early 2023, Amanda and Sarah were hired to be the community managers for the Behemoth. The new duo is a lot more different than Manuel and Roxanne. They're a lot more enthusiastic sounding, they're a lot louder, and they're a lot more fucking annoying. Now, before I proceed, I have to specify that I do not hate Amanda and Sarah. I just don't think they're really good at their job, and they don't appeal to me specifically. So, what do I mean by they're bad at their job? First of all, let me bring up the Discord server. The main server is kind of just dead and boring right now. Nothing interesting really happens here, and it's overrun with NPCs like the epic Joe. What a fucking NPC! Apart from the NPCs, you get normal people. People like some tiny critter, Rexibro, and Burnt Toast. The type of people you can have actual conversations with. And then you get the drama people. People who make the biggest deal out of anything no matter how not deep it is. And I'm not gonna bring up examples because, you know, uh, I don't want to start more of this. So into the trash you go, message folder. Have a nice day. So how do Amanda and Sarah fall into the Discord server? Well, they're really shit at moderation. The only other moderator in the server is Scrag, and he's a pretty alright guy. And since Scrag is the only active moderator in the server out of the several other moderators, him, Amanda, and Sarah are the only moderators in this server that are active. Which is why the rules suck ass and are so strict and why the stupidest moderation stuff happens ever. For example, the time they deleted the voice chat, because we were sending links outside of the link sharing channel, and Steph, a literal 12 year old, decided to stream very not good videos once. And the result of this was me getting banned for being too hard to moderate, and people who questioned the VC being gone also getting banned for no reason. Other mod moments include any time Zombie talks about modding Castle Crashers and Amanda butting in to tell him to stop because it's apparently against the TOS to mod Steam games, and literally warning anyone for the tiniest thing, like the time I was warned for mentioning that Kiwi Farms was down. And honestly, if the server had more moderators, they wouldn't have to use the retarded excuse of doing stuff because it makes moderation easier. But there really wouldn't be a point because, you know, the server's just dead. So if you plan on joining the Discord server for the Behemoth, just keep these in mind. And also, uh... Next I want to mention the social media accounts and the Twitch streaming. First of all, with the streaming, when the Behemoth stream Alien Hominid Invasion, they have these very goofy ass looking VTuber models. I have never liked these, and I will never like these. I don't care if this is meant to look cute, it looks like Newgrounds porn. There are also moments during streams in which I just have to pause because the stream is so ADHD. Dan Paladin and Amanda talk like literal cartoon characters, and are sometimes just loud in general. It just makes me miss when Dan Paladin was calm and he had his really shitty mic. I'm also gonna bring up times when they stream games other than Alien Hominid Invasion, like the time they streamed Raft and I almost fell asleep. And the fucking Pizza Tower stream, oh my god! I can definitely see how certain people would like these kind of streams, but since I'm not a big stream guy, I just personally don't like these. With other socials of the Behemoth, there's the Twitter account, which is pretty, um, 
mid. For instance, anytime they tweet shit like this, I feel like reporting them for mental endangerment. I wish you could do that to people. And the account really doesn't talk about anything except for castle crashers or alien hominid invasion. And they only mention pit people when it goes on sale. And they also retweet fan art, I guess. But that's not really important because they dodged my fan art. I know you saw that, Amanda. I know you saw that in 4K resolution. And speaking of the community managers again, why are Amanda and Sarah at the behemoth exactly? Amanda hasn't played Battle Block Theater or Pit People and hasn't even finished Castle Crashers. Is it because they appeal to the type of people that like behemoth nowadays? I don't know. I'm just very confused by why these two people are working for this company. M make me community manager, okay? I will- I'll thrive in this community. You will get- um, Alien Omni Invasion will get so many players if I was community manager. I mean, I wouldn't really blame Amanda and Sarah if they chose to leave this company. I could imagine that them managing the Discord server is like being at a kindergarten managing all the children, and I couldn't really see how anyone could enjoy that. And another thing I actually want to bring up, which is super interesting, is that Amanda and Sarah have revealed that they have accounts outside of the ones in the Behemoth server. Which means that the only reason they talk in the server is because it's their job and they get paid for it. It's also one of the many reasons why they don't talk on the server on weekends, because they can take a break from the retardation. And it's honestly just super upsetting that these are the type of people who are running the community. But, you know, I don't care, dude. I'm done talking about these motherfuckers. And before I get to the main event of this video, I want to bring up an event that happened in December of 2022. The Behemoth decided to do a parody of the 12 Days of Christmas, but with Alien Hominid, which was, um, you know, as gay as it sounds. But on the last day, it was revealed to us that Alien Hominid Invasion would be released in 2023. And I was honestly very surprised on how they are able to develop a game like this in only a span of four years. That was until they made a public demo for the third time. And the main problem with this is that when I played the demo, I noticed that it was just the exact same game. There weren't any crucial additions within the demo that are worth mentioning. They did hide some stuff, but we didn't really see anything new that was really just worth mentioning. So that's when I got paranoid throughout the entirety of 2023 for this game. I was afraid that this is going to suffer the same effect that Pit People did, being a game that's super repetitive and lacks in content. But I still kept my expectations extremely high. I was hoping that they were hiding a bunch of stuff from us, and the stuff they're showing us in the demos was just, you know, teasing. But as it turns out, I was dead wrong. The black cat jumps open her jaws, stretches her legs and shows her claws, then she gets up and stands on four, hugs the blade and yachts some more. She yachts her When I'm alone And thinking about myself So yeah, I bought the game, waited for it to download, went to the shower, and came back. It was time for me to play Alien Hominid Invasion. And was it good? 
<laughs> no. But why was it not good? Well, there's one really obvious elephant in the room, but we're gonna ignore him for now and get onto that very, very, very big elephant later. Let me talk about the first problem, the artwork. Now, don't get me wrong, the artwork in this game is pretty cool, and it definitely shows how Dan Paladin has been improving. The reason I don't like it is because it lacks the charm of previous Behemoth games. It's not bad to the point in where I hate it, but I do not prefer it compared to previous Behemoth titles. The saturated colors of all the characters really don't fit this game's style, and the agents are the only expressive characters in this game, which isn't a bad thing, but I really wish that the aliens had some form of expression in that horrendous face of theirs. That's definitely one of my more major problems with the art, the alien. The alien is so unexpressive and so boring. They have no facial expressions and they have the simplest of movements. By that I mean everything they do from diving and rolling is so unexpressive and simple. But not simple in a way that makes it expressive, but rather just lazy looking. In comparison to the OG alien, he's super expressive. When he rolls, he doesn't just rotate. He friggin' rolls. When he shoots a charge shot, he doesn't just move his hand up and down. You can see his body blast back. When you die in alien in Hominid Invasion, your character just goes up into the sky and falls down while frowning. But in HD, you die in several ways. You flip back when you get shot, you can get eaten, you can get crushed, you can get split in half, and a whole lot of other things. Every time you beat a level, your alien does a little dance instead of just going up to a mothership and having the same stock pose. The alien in Alien Hominid HD manages to be a lot more expressive despite being super simple in comparison to Invasion. And in terms of the cutscenes in Invasion, they're pretty alright. They do lack the personality of the behemoth overall in comparison to battle block and pit people's cutscenes, but they're pretty solid. Some of them do manage to carry that classic behemoth simplicity, and most of the time they kind of just look like Netflix cartoon. The art isn't terrible, it just doesn't carry the behemoth personality, you know? And if you're against this opinion, uh, just quickly go and play these four games and come back. And this concludes the art portion of my review. Now let's go on to more gameplay issues that I have. Most of the gameplay stuff that I have said originally still stands here. For the weapons and game, a lot of them are kind of, um, ass. Pretty much any weapon that requires you to reload it, except for the shotgun, sucks complete balls. These kinds of weapons really makes killing enemies a lot more impractical, and they aren't as fun to use like the dual laser or photon gun. In terms of gameplay, it would be retarded of me to compare this game to Alien Hominid HD, mainly because these are two completely different games, which is why I find it odd that this was marketed as a sequel at first. The main difference is being that Alien Hominid HD's levels are linear, while Alien Hominid Invasion's levels are non-linear. Invasion tries to take on a more roguelike kind of level system, but instead of getting kicked right back to the beginning of the game, you're kicked back to the start of the city area. And it honestly doesn't feel like I'm getting more powerful when I played this game in comparison to the demos, which I really felt like I was actually getting more powerful. And I will get onto why this game doesn't work as a roguelike just now. I'm almost gonna talk about that gigantic elephant behind me. The last thing I want to talk about in terms of the gameplay are the hats and stat stuff. I'm gonna be real with you. I don't like most of the hats in this game. There are a handful of hats that I have, but let's say that they all have the worst stats known to man. The only way to kind of increase the power of your alien and alien hominid invasion is by giving it a hat with really good stats. Like a hat that increases your jump height, a hat that increases your damage, increases your defense, all that other good garbage. My main problem with the hat system is that there's no way to carry or transfer stats over to another hat. So you can have one of the greatest hats in the game with the worst stats, and one of the worst hats in the game with the best stats. And there's no way someone didn't bring this up. A lot of people in the community really didn't like this, so I don't really get why they didn't add it into the main game. The same goes for weapons. What I really think they should add is a part in shops in which you can transfer stats from item to item. Speaking of shops, my only issue I have with shops are, well, Pigments. Why do you need to buy pigments? Why aren't they just all available to you when you start a save? The pigments don't really do anything. They don't make the game any easier, they just make your alien look different. Speaking of the difficulty of this game, Invasion isn't really that hard. Even on Insane, I didn't find that I was struggling. The Insane mode in Castle Crashers and Battle Block Theater make a lot more sense than the Insane mode in Alien Hominid Invasion. With Castle Crashers, the enemies had an insane amount of health and damage, and in Battle Block Theater, when you died, you restarted the whole Whole level. The difficulty in Alien Hominid Invasion's Insane Mode literally just decreases your health cap to 2 hearts and decreases your general health. 
where if you know how to roll, this game is not going to be that hard. The only other kind of difficulty is just enemy spam, which isn't that hard if you leave the level. So to quickly speed up to the main problem with this game, the achievements suck, and Opus 51 is not in the game's soundtrack. So yeah, it's time for issue number one, that obese elephant in the room, repetitive gameplay, and lack of variety. Now let me just go on and say, Alien Hominid Invasion is a game with pretty much nothing in it. There isn't enough content in this game to make it worth purchasing. It had suffered the same issue that Pit People had suffered, being a very short story and repetitive gameplay. The reason why I personally think that this game is very repetitive is because if you've played the demos, you've already experienced about 80% of the game, and 80% of the game is doing the exact same thing over and over again, with the same amount of strength but altering it slightly. The game's stages lack so much variety. There's so little missions in the game that it will feel like you've done the same mission over and over again. There's no significance to any kind of level. Everything just feels the same. Nothing changes, everything is constant, without any kind of form of shaking it up. In comparison to the demos in the final game, they barely added anything. There are six bosses in the whole game, one which we've never seen gameplay of before, two which we've never seen in the game in general, and three of the six bosses are just from Alien Hominid HD, which I can kind of respect the returning of these guys, but I really just wanted something more original. There are a handful of enemies in this game, but you'll already experience almost every single one if you've played through two levels. And in comparison to the demos, only one of them was new. That being this big guy, which is just an agent. They did add in weapons, but most of the new weapons they added aren't even that good. The game honestly just feels super unfinished. And if it spent a little more time in the oven, it would actually be really good. This was a game I had really high expectations for. The idea that they had for the game in general was so good good, but it was executed so badly. And I really think the only way this game can be fixed is with content updates. They have been announcing that they are adding a few things, but realistically, uh, ain't nobody cares about weapon balancing and enemy balancing. Instead of trying to balance out stuff and adding more hats, add more weapons, add more enemies, add more of something, change gameplay stuff, make weapon switching a feature instead of a mutation, add more bosses, just add stuff that'll make this game not feel like it's unfinished or like it's still in a demo stage. Stage. Add more things that'll make people want to play this game. Just make the game have content that is worth the $20 you are going to pay for it. As well as music. The music in this game is pretty alright, but I kind of hear it way too much. Similarly in Pit People, great music, but it's way too repetitive, like the gameplay. Invasion's soundtrack is probably my least favorite soundtrack from any Behemoth game. The sound overall is just very not my thing. I'm not saying that it's bad, but it's just, you know, whatever. I don't really use music as a way to criticize a game. But hear me out right, if, if they had Opus 51 in that soundtrack, this game would go hard. I take back everything I said about this game, this game would be S tier, S tier Behemoth game. A part of me really wishes that this game was just delayed so that they could add and fix some stuff before they released it. And I think I'll conclude on the multiplayer. The multiplayer is definitely the best part of this game. This game is fun to play with friends in comparison to yourself, in which you'll experience faster burnout by yourself, but much slower burnout when it's with friends, since you'll all be enjoying yourselves. My only gripe with the multiplayer is that there's no screen independence, meaning that one player can't go to the left and one player can't go to the right simultaneously. And they did this mainly due to performance, which, uh, yeah, is understandable. So to conclude this review, Alien Hominid Invasion ended up being a really short, a really unfinished, and a really boring game. The five year wait for this game was not really worth it, and neither was buying this game. Alien Hominid would honestly be pretty good if Behemoth stuck to their classic ropes of linear level progression, instead of adding randomly generated aspects to the game and expecting it to be replayable. And if this game is a lot less successful than Pit People, then yeah, the Behemoth may probably be nearing its demise. A big emphasis on probably, since they could redeem themselves with Game 6, which I'm going to talk about in a very quick second. So, how was Alien Hominid Invasion received? From the reviews on Steam, a lot of them are very positive, and I can't argue with that. 
they're entitled to their own opinion, but I'm way more fascinated in the negative reviews for this game. People leave incredibly long paragraphs, showing their distaste for this game and how disappointed they are. One of the biggest highlights being Dot. Dot left a negative review of over 600 words. Not to mention that 61 people found this review very helpful. And the comments that people left on the review were so autistic that Dot had to disable comments on his review. But I can definitely say, after talking to a few people who are real Behemoth fans, they are very disappointed and upset that the game released in this state. And the last thing about reviews is that the game only has a thousand reviews. And it's a great segue into my next point of sales. Well, if we take a quick look at the Steam chart, we can see... Oh. Oh no. Yeah, uh, those launch numbers are not very good. Well, in comparison to the other Behemoth games, Hominid's average player count is below 40, with them having three-digit numbers of players by the 2nd of November, but then dropping down to two-digit numbers of players by the 28th of November. Now that we're mentioning dates, the current date is the 12th of December. And judging by the estimated owners, player counts, and player breakdown, it's safe to say that this invasion wasn't too successful as I thought it would be. Now, there could be multiple reasons for people not wanting to buy this game, like odd and poor advertising in the game itself, but I think it's just because of lack of interest. You see, the Behemoth is an old company, and it's not as popular as it used to be. And I think many people just don't care about it anymore. They've probably lost a ton of followers after Pit People. But again, there could be many reasons for this game not doing well. I also want to bring up the port of Alien Hominid HD to PC, which in my opinion is extremely questionable. Now, don't get me wrong, this is probably the best thing to happen out of Invasion's release. But the thing I'm wondering is why they would release it along side invasion, despite the Behemoth talking about doing it in the past. My theory is that the Behemoth's port of HD is a plan B for keeping their company afloat. You know, if people don't like the new game, they can just go play the old game kind of thing. Now, I could be wrong about this, but hey, that's just a theory. Theory. As of now, the only two games that are kind of just keeping the Behemoth afloat are Castle Crashers and Battle Block Theater, having much higher player counts than Pit People or Alien Hominid Invasion, with the main reason being that these are actually good games. Taking these into account, you have to wonder, will the Behemoth ever fail? Well, as a company. Not immediately, but it kind of is inevitable. You see, Pit People made $16 million less than Battle Block Theater, and if Alien Hominid Invasion makes less than Pit People, then yeah, this game could be considered as a flop. Not to mention Game 6. If Alien Hominid Invasion makes less than Pit People, that could also mean that Game 6 would probably be their last game. Now, Behemoth could sell out and just make Game 6 Castle Crashers 2 for a quick buck, and I honestly wouldn't be surprised if Game 6 is Castle Crashers 2. It's what I personally don't want them to do. I want Game 6 to be a solid game. Not a Castle Crashers 2, but a friggin' video game that doesn't focus on randomly generated assets, that has content, that has replayability without being repetitive. A game that is worth your $20. Speaking of $20, why is Alien Hominid Invasion $20? A game of this quality does not deserve to be $20. Behemoth, lower that price right now, dog, if you want people to buy this game. Quick side note, uh, I live in South Africa, so this game is actually cheaper here in comparison to America, but it is still the most expensive a behemoth game. Why? And to conclude my rant about the behemoth, uh, stick to your guys' roots. Don't focus on randomly generated garbage, just make games like you used to do. Now, with the behemoth community, Amanda and Sarah have been lacking, dog. Like, really, really lacking. Literally zero interesting things are being posted on the social media accounts, their stream of Alien Hominid HD was nap time, and get this right, they're temporarily leaving their server on read only, so that they can take a Christmas break. Even more evidence of lazy moderation. My personal theory for them doing this is because they didn't want to talk to the epic Joe anymore. And the real funny thing is that this wouldn't have happened if the behemoth had more moderators in their server. Other people, including me, would have never been banned from this server if you just had more moderators. And the reason why the behemoth doing this is a bad idea is because their server is gonna die. I can make a really hot prediction that about six people are gonna come back when this server pulls up again. Because at the time of recording, I still have an alt in the server, but the server is not even worth spying on anymore because nothing happens. The same people talk in here every day about the most uninteresting stuff ever. And after this video goes up, I think I'm just done with Behemoth in general. As a person who's receiving these kind of comments, uh, nah, I don't think I can be a part of this community anymore. So yeah, that was my Behemoth video of me crying like a baby for an extended amount of time. Uh, I make cartoons. If you want to see those, uh, hit that subscribe button. And if there's one thing that we can take away from this video,
It's that Opus 51 is the best song ever made, baby. <laughs> Can we get a round of applause for Boognish for giving us this epic song made by the, the two prophets, Dean and Gene Lee, and the best musicians ever made. Um, don't join Behemoth server when it comes back on second. Uh, subscribe, uh, do all that garbage. Uh, this song is pretty cool. Listen, listen to Opus 51. Opus 51 is like the best song ever made. Come with me to the end of the sea. I feel like I feel like alien hominid. Wait, let me read the message again. I feel like alien hominid is made for people who are huge. People who are huge. 